here we back now we got a very interesting video for y'all today man today we're going to provide a case study on the psychology of the colonized mind now this is going to be some groundbreaking information because i'm not sure if scientists have conducted research on this topic but today we are going to get into it man we are going to examine the psychology of the colonized mind now today's video is going to be a follow-up video to one i dropped the other day entitled take a look up on the screen the reasons why divestors run back to black men and in that video, a young lady had went viral because she had shared her personal testimony of being a black woman who dated outside her race. And I'm going to run the footage for y'all who didn't see it. But long story short, she was basically sharing her testimony as a black woman who had ran into men that you would classify as racist. And she did not understand how it was possible for a man to be racist and still at the same time get in bed with a black woman. She didn't understand it. She never picked up a history book a day in her life. I told you, these women do not study history. And even if they do study history, they don't give a damn about history. <laughs> but anyways, man, I'm going to jump into the footage. And then after that. I'm going to jump into a second video where it was another woman who took offense to what she said. Yeah, she took offense to what she said and she decided to come to the defense of white men. Listen, I'm going to come back on my commentary, run the footage. I'll be back. Let's go. This is a personal testimony as someone who has dated outside of my race. Plenty. OK. A lot of y'all. A lot of y'all like what you see. When you date a black woman, you, you you love the beauty of black women, which I can't blame you. You love the aesthetic. You love how different we are. You love our bodies. But the problem is a lot of y'all don't even like black people. Yeah, let's talk about it. Because y'all know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. The black women who have literally experienced being called the N word by the white man that they're dating. Let's talk about <laughs> white men that have literally had children by black women, but can't stand black people. Now, for those of y'all who watched my video last week, you already saw that clip, right? I'm gonna jump into the second video in a little bit. Now, the reason why that video went so crazy was because if you went into the comment section of that video, there was thousands upon thousands upon thousands of black women in the comment section. And I covered this on my last video last week. There were thousands of black women who had similar stories talking about, yeah, my ex-husband, yeah, he was a racist. My baby daddy, yeah, he was a racist. I have four ex-boyfriends, yeah, they all racist. Oh yeah, my ex-boyfriend, yeah, he a racist. Oh yeah, this dude I smashed, yeah, he a racist. A bunch of black women in the comment section sharing their testimony about how they laid in bed with a bunch of white supremacists. But anyways, I'm gonna jump into the second clip of this lady who was acting as a defense attorney for white men for free of charge, right? She acted as a lawyer defending white men and I'm gonna jump into the footage, man. <laughs> Listen, it's crazy, man, it's crazy. Let's go. I want y'all to read this comment right here. They just want to play with you just play with you behind closed doors. Let me say this. <clears throat> As an African-American woman who has had more relationships with palm colored men than I have with men of my own ethnicity, I can tell you this is not true. And I really wish we could get to a place where we can be 100% honest on this app because this right here is the exception. It's not the rule. Did y'all know that African-American women and palm colored men have the lowest divorce rate? They are the most successful couple, the black woman and palm colored man now the reason why i said this video is going to be a case study on the individual psychology of the colonized mind is because one element of the colonized mind is you ever notice how it doesn't matter and this is not gender specific it could be a black man or a black woman the colonized individual it doesn't matter what the white community has done or what they're doing to them they will always be able to find a silver lining they will always be able to look at a million racist whites and they'll be able to find that one that one good white 
They'll find that one good white person and they'll cling on to that one good white person and they'll just hold on to that one good white person tight. They'll hold on tight. See, they found that one good white. But if one black person does something wrong, if one black person does something negative, if one black person rubs them the wrong way, if one black person steps on their shoes, the entire collective of black people are banished to the netherworld, right? The entire collective of black people have to be held accountable for the actions of the one individual. But you could have a million racist whites, a whole sea of racist whites, but they'll cling on to that one good white and they'll use that one good white person as a representative for the entire collective of whites. You see, oh, we found one good white. There's one good white person. I have one good white friend. You see, they're not all bad, bro. They're not all bad. There's some good ones there, man. There's some good ones there. And this behavior is not even gender specific. You'll find this amongst the colonized male, the colonized female. This this is what happens, bro. This is an L. They should, they should have a field of science that studies the psychology of the colonized mind so we could really understand what we are dealing with. And brothers, understand this, get this. Do you understand that that same woman that just sat there and said that, oh, the most successful relationship is between the white man and the black woman? Do you know that her screen name on social media is called, I'm the proud black woman? Her name is Proud Black Woman. That's why, bro, go to my playlist session. I have an entire playlist called Black Men Stay Away From Swirlers and Divestors. And the reason why I make these videos is because I know there's some brothers out there. One day you want to start a family, right? One day you want to start a wife. One day, one day you want to have a wife. But you got to understand, you got to vet. You got to vet these women that you are dealing with, bro. That's why me, I do not deal with women who did outside their race, right? For me, it's automatic disqualification. Once a woman tells me that she run around with the Europeans, it's automatic disqualification because you have the psychology of the colonized individual. And I cannot have a colonized individual raising my children, raising my legacy. I cannot have that. So it's automatic disqualification once I find out that you ever laid down with the Europeans. That's my personal preference because I don't lay down with the Europeans. I'm not chasing the Europeans. So I'm entitled to a black woman who is not engaging in that type of behavior. I think I think that's fair. I think that's fair in my opinion. And going back to what she said about how the white man and the black woman is the most successful relationship. Listen, baby, listen. In school, I wasn't the best at math. I had like an 85 average in math. I was really good at English writing. You know, I'm an excellent writer. When it came to math, I was kind of average, but even I understand if you don't even have that much of a sample size to even work with, how are you getting these percentages? For example, if I go to Saudi Arabia, right? If me and four other black men go to Saudi Arabia and we get married to women from Saudi Arabia and all our marriages are successful, do you know that we could say that the most successful marriage is between the black man and the woman from Saudi Arabia because of our sample size of five marriages that were all successful at 100% rate? You know what I mean? So. How many black women and white men are getting married like that in the first place, right? Then we got to ask, okay, you're taking this tiny number, this tiny minuscule sample size that is not even, bro, come on, bro. Do you know the percentage, bro? I'm not even going to mention the percentage here because it's so damn small. So you're dealing with a tiny minuscule sample size, and then you're taking the tiny amount of interracial marriages and then saying that that's the most successful relationship combination on the planet. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's no different than, like I said, a group of five black men going to Saudi Arabia, marrying women from Saudi Arabia, and then using that tiny sample size and saying, this is the most successful relationship ever. The black man and the Arabian woman. <laughs> Come on, man. You're only dealing with five marriages over there. So how how is that a sample size enough to even make an assessment? Number one, the marriages between white men and black women have to increase before we can even make a true assessment, right? We know how to do math. You can't take your little tiny amount of marriages and then try to extrapolate that onto the entire population. First of all, you gotta get the number of marriages up to a decent amount to where we could even take that serious, right? These type of arguments only work on individuals who do not know how to do math. These arguments only work on people who fell asleep during class. I was not asleep during class, I was paying attention. I might've been cracking jokes, I might've been flirting with the shake next to me, but I was, I was awake during class. I was awake during math class, okay? I was awake. So no, I'm not taking that statistic seriously. Another element of the colonized mind, you ever notice that the colonized individual, they worship white people more than white people worship themselves? For example, you never even hear white women talk about that. You never hear white women talk about, oh, white men are the greatest providers. White men are so amazing. White men, are, oh man, I love white men so much. Yo, you never hear white women say that. White women, they be dogging white men out, bro. They be dogging them out. They be dogging them out. They be complaining about the patriarchy. They be talking about, bro. White women don't even be worshiping their own men like that. They don't even worship the men they raise. And they raise those men. Those are, those are their sons and their husbands and their fathers and their uncles. They don't even worship those men like that. But the black woman, the colonized woman, she'll worship, she'll worship the white man more than the white woman worships her own man. 
That's the psychology of the colonized individual. We have to make this into a branch of study, into a branch of science. We have to go deep into the subject. I'm telling you, bro. When you listen to how the divestor speaks about the European man, she talks about this man like he's the, he's God's gift to earth, right? Meanwhile, the white woman herself, the European female, she don't even care about him. She want to go to work. She want to be independent. She want to have her own. She want to get divorced. She don't care about that motherfucker. <laughs> but anyways, man, let me get into the response, right? The lady at the beginning, she responded to this lady. And uh, I'm going to come back on my commentary once again. Let's go. Hey, guys. This is my response to proud black woman. Uh, she stitched one of my videos and then, like a coward, blocked me before I could even respond. So let's get into it. So the main issue I have with this woman is she literally acts like Candace Owens 2.0 and she's always talking about how great white men are. And then under the same breath, she'll bash black men. And I just, I can't stand that at all. So as y'all saw, I posted a video talking about not all white men, but racist white men who pretend to like black women and black people and date them. And so she responded to this. And my question for you is, ma'am, why are you so far up white men's asses that you can't simply acknowledge this reality? The reality of, if you didn't see it, the hundreds and thousands of black women who commented on my video saying that they too have experienced dating someone who ended up being a racist. Not only black women, but black men have experienced this as well. It's very much so a thing, but all you're doing is gaslighting us and acting like we just pulled this shit out of our ass and we didn't. So let's get into it more because since you literally just posted a video talking about white men are providers, this colored men are providers. Every white man I've dated has provided and protected. But since every time you make a TikTok video, you're sitting at a desk working and you have your cash app in your bio. So, so how well are these white men providing for you, sis? Because to me, it don't look like they're giving you shit. Y you should be sitting at home, you know, being a stay at home wife or whatever you are. I don't know if you're married to one or not because I don't see a ring. But you talk about all these white men you've dated that are so great at taking care of you. The, why do you have your cash app in your bio? Are you really that desperate for money or, or white male attention? I don't know what it is, but <laughs> it's giving Candace Owens. Another thing, your gaslighting and invalidation of things that many black people have experienced just baffles me because you're over there saying that you've dated so many white men which clearly over half of them have disposed of you because you weren't married, it didn't end up lasting long, and you're just gonna act like they were all perfect, none of them were even prejudiced, that's cap. That's literally cap. <laughs> I, I cannot even believe you get on camera and act like every single person you've met is it, just perfect inside and out because we, we know damn well that is a damn lie, so stop. Another thing that's cap is you and your little friends are over there commenting saying she's trying to convince black women not to date outside their race. <laughs> Did you literally not see my response video saying I do not care if people have a problem with me dating outside my race, I will continue to do it? No, you didn't because you're incompetent. Now, listen, brothers, I'm sure after watching those videos, you understand why I say when it comes to divestors, swirlers, things like that. That's automatic disqualification. I don't want nothing to do with them, bro. I don't even want to smash. You see, some of y'all boys, y'all want to smash and dash. I don't even want to smash. When a woman tells me she be jumping in bed with the European, chasing after the European, I'm not even interested anymore, bro. Any interest, any lust, any desire that I had, it automatically went down to zero. It evaporated into dust. It doesn't exist anymore. Think about it, brother. That was the same woman who was complaining about the so-called racist, you know, dealing with the racist whites and things like that. And she had thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of black women sharing their testimony and agreeing with her, right? And at the end of the video, she still says, I'm still gonna chase after, I'm still gonna jump in bed with the whites. I'm still gonna arch that back and bend over for the white man. Listen, brother, that's why you gotta stay away, right? That's why you gotta stay away. And it goes back to that psychology I told you. You could have a million racist whites, a million racists in front of you. But they'll look for that one, they'll, they'll search high and low, under the couch, behind the bed, in the backyard, in the trash can. They'll search high and low, they'll scout with the earth for that one good white person, that one good white, that one good white person, man. And they'll just hold on tight and they'll have them as the representative for, see, it's not all, 
it's not all we still got we still got good whites left we still got some good white bro i'm telling you but when it, when it's in reverse when it comes to when it comes to their own fellow black person let one black person even just give them an attitude the entire collective of black people got to be held accountable for the actions of one individual man one individual and that type of schizophrenia that type of psychology i don't want that anywhere around me you can't build a foundation you can't build a foundation with anybody who thinks like that bro you can't imagine how she's gonna raise your daughter god forbid you pass away what lessons is she gonna teach your daughter it doesn't make any sense man it doesn't make any sense you cannot build a foundation with a colonized individual and that's what i see man when i disqualify the divesters and the soilers i'm disqualifying colonized individuals because a colonized mind you cannot build anything with a colonized mind that's going to set you backwards they cannot provide anything beneficial or positive to your situation they can only bring you down with a dark cloud of negativity they have nothing to offer you bro nothing to offer you i don't even want sex from them bro. i don't even want to smash i don't even want to sleep with you bro i'm not interested you turn me off your whole psychology it just you could be bad, you could be a dime, you could be a model, but as soon as I understand you got the psychology of a colonized individual, you don't even you're not, you're not even attractive anymore, bro. You're not even attractive anymore. And you know the scary part about it is, bro, both of these women, both of these women, they claim that they still they they date black men as well. Yeah, they be jumping in bed with the white man. Yeah, they be arching that back for the white man, but they say they still date black men. They still are on the dating scene dating black men. Do you know how scary that is, bro? Do you know how scary, bro? As a, as, a, as a young black man myself, you know, I'm a young black man. I'm doing my thing, bro. You know, I'm doing pretty good for myself. Do you know how scary it is to not know who you are dealing with on the other side of the table? Whenever you meet a new woman in the streets, you don't know who you're dealing with. That's scary, bro. That's scary. Because social media and real life is different things. The women will never exhibit these characteristics or show you these this mindset in real life. They're going to hide it. They're going to present themselves in a completely different fashion to how they talk on social media. So you never know who you are dealing with. That's why me, I just hold a, a firm stance on that. A firm, I have firm boundaries on that. And I think that's fair, right? I don't want to deal with schizophrenic women whose actions don't match their words, right? Both of these women, you got one of them calling himself the proud black woman. You got the other one sitting here complaining and giving her testimony on how she slept with a bunch of racist whites. But at the same time, towards the end of the video, she said she's never going to stop jumping in bed with the whites. <laughs> oh, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. The psychology of the colonized mind. I'm telling you, this should be made into a branch of science. And the worst part about it is, bro, the worst part about it, both of them claim that they are still, they still date black men. Oh, my God. My condolences to the black men that run into these women. Oh, my goodness, bro. Oh, my goodness. Imagine getting the, the leftovers of the, of the white supremacists. Or imagine dealing with a black woman who claims that the most successful couple on the planet is the white man and a black woman. Um, imagine going on a date with that. Oh my God, bro. And you know, she's never going to tell you how she feels. She's never going to expose how she really feels. So you never know who you are dealing with, bro. That's why you got to conduct high level research, background checks, intelligence operations to know who you're dealing with. It's very chaotic out here, man. But I just got I just got to say, listen, I'll admit, she flamed her up though. She flamed her up. Yo, the haymaker for me, the knockout punch for me was when she said, you claim you live this amazing life, right? You claim you live this amazing life. You living in the lap of luxury, right? You had all these amazing relationships with all these Europeans, but how come you still got to clock into work every goddamn morning? How come you're not sitting at home in your mansion? How come you're sitting at a goddamn desk? And you notice on the TikTok video, she can't even raise her voice because she on the clock. She at work right now making TikTok videos, bro. She can't even raise her voice because her boss might walk in and be like, hey, uh, making a lot of noise there, huh? You see me, I I'm in my own house, bro. I can raise my voice. Listen, I, I can raise my voice. I can yell. I can do my thing. She can't even raise her voice. She's sitting here on a TikTok talking about, look at this comment, guys. You saw this comment? The most successful relationship is the white man and the black woman. Okay, guys, I got to go back to work. I got to go back to work. Yo, bro, listen. Yo, yo, y'all got to stop living vicariously through social media, man. This is a joke. She got the cash app in the bio. You sitting up at work. You sitting at the goddamn desk clocking into work every goddamn day. No man paying your bills. Ain't no man paying your bills. You got a bunch of tattoos all over your chest looking like a gangbanger. What man of any caliber is going to attach himself to you? What man of any caliber is going to attach himself to you? Even an upper class black man would never bring you home to his mother with all them tattoos on your chest looking like a goddamn prisoner. <laughs> you looking like a Mexican gangbanger with all them tattoos on your chest, man. Get out of here. But that right there is also another element of the colonized mind. The colonized individual, they romanticize everything about European society. They automatically assume that European society is just so much superior than their own community, right? They just got it made, you know, everything is just so, everything is so amazing. I got to go to the white neighborhood. I got to go to the white school. The Europeans, they got it made. 
that is the element of the colonized mind. I guarantee she doesn't even know any white folks, bro. She don't got no man. Listen, she she don't even, she don't even know any white folks, man. Stop it, stop it, bro. You mad ghetto? You mad ghetto? You you're not talking to no men of any high caliber, bro. That's why you got to go to work, man. That's why you got to go to work, man. I I could see, I could see, I could see you are not a refined, sophisticated woman that be around upper class men. Stop it, stop it. The only men that you be around are gangbangers and niggas that shoot dice. <laughs> Let's be for real. Let's keep it a hundred, man. Let's keep it a hundred for once. But anyways, man, to summarize this, take a look up on the screen. I seen an excellent tweet from this brother that also is also exemplifies the colonized mind, the psychology of the colonized mind. But this guy, he was talking about mainly, you know, the beef between the Tarina Shee crowd, the FBA crowd versus the Africans, the black immigrants, whatever. This guy said this somehow black people have no problem smiling in Europe, surrounded by racists, Millions and millions of white racists somehow get moved aside for the prospect of friendly whites. But some Africans not liking us blankets 53 countries and 1.2 billion people. You see, it's the same psychology whether you go to the divestors, the swirlers, the FBA, the ADOs. It's all the same thing, bro. It's all the same thing. It just manifests itself in different ways. The psychology of the colonized mind. I'm telling you, we need to make this into an official branch of study. An official branch of science so we can really get to the bottom of this bro so we can examine this phenomenon the top the top scientists in the world need to examine this phenomenon but in summary man the scariest thing about this entire situation is that both of these women they claim that they both still date black men that's the worst part about it all bro the worst part about it all is both of these women claim that they both are pro black i'm a proud black woman one of them calls himself the proud black woman the other one claims that she's so pro black and she's down for her people and she's talking about slavery and all this shit oh my god bro oh my god these are the options that black men have to choose from bro i'm telling you it's a minefield out here in these streets that's why yo when i look at my 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 father my uncles all my elders my mentors and i see you know their amazing marriages with their wives they've been married for decades i envy those men because they came from a time where they didn't deal with all this bullshit bro they didn't deal with they didn't deal with this bro they didn't deal with it bro Back in my home country, we didn't have no divest movement. It wasn't no divest movement. I mean, in a country that's 95% black, I mean, you know, black love is going to be all over the place, man. Black love is the standard, you know, it's the way of life. It's the default setting. So, you know, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, you know. It's, it's wild. It's wild. But like I said, regardless of the circumstance, I'm sticking to what I stick to. Like I said, black women only. Black women only. That's for me, man. I don't got nothing for the white woman. I don't got nothing for the Asian woman. I don't got nothing for any other woman, man. I don't got nothing for you. You know, I don't got nothing for you. We could have a conversation and shit like that. But besides that, I got nothing for you, baby girl. You know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. But I don't got nothing for no swirling, no divester, no woman dating outside her race, no woman chasing after the European. I don't got nothing for you either. I'll put you in the same basket. I put the divester and the swirler in the same basket as the white girl. I don't got nothing for none of y'all. <laughs> I don't got nothing for none of y'all. I don't got nothing for none of y'all, bro. I need a black woman on my same wavelength. And that's the only thing I deal with. Anyways, man, it's your boy Never Card that's Celine back in the building. Yes indeed. Cash app up on the screen and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. Know they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour with it, wedge. I got business. This shit is an art. And they can never be taught Selling my soul I can never be bought Play with my money I see you in court Run to the check And I do it for sport Babylon falling I go to the source Packing my luggage And go overseas Shorty be with me And she so at least Shorty be charged That I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence Probably gonna murder me Don't fuck with brands Cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit And you're smacking their faces